Today we want to talk about how to utilize trail cameras for security applications. We'll be focusing on different setups for homes, businesses, and properties. These guidelines will help make sure you have evidence to take action if a theft or trespassing event occurs. So trail cameras and security, typically they do not go hand in hand, but if you understand a few basic concepts, they can certainly get the job done. Number one, camera location. You're going to want to place your camera in discrete locations where they're not easily seen. That could be off the beaten path as long as you're inside your detection distance. It could be an elevated set where the camera's out of the line of sight of people, or you simply could just get creative and camouflage your camera to blend into its surroundings. Number two, you're going to want to use a black flash camera because there's no visible light emitted at night when it's taking a picture or video. Number three is image and video quality. With black flash cameras, there is a big difference in nighttime images from a low-end camera to a higher-end camera. So you're going to want to use something on the level of a, a, a Lift 2 where it's going to produce quality nighttime photos and videos that you're going to be able to turn in to authorities with some kind of usable data. Number four is you're going to want to match your settings and your camera to the specific scenario. And that could get a little complicated, so we're going to give you guys some examples. So our first example is going to be job site security. As you see behind me, this is a residential construction project where the general contractor has actually had some tools walk away within the past few weeks. So this is a prime scenario to use a trail camera for security. So the first thing we did, we came in here, mounted this camera in a discrete location. We're far enough away from the building where this camera is not easily seen, but we're still within a detection distance and we're able to monitor the three access points of the building because the entire, the entire home is in our field of view. This camera is set up in time-lapse mode with the PIR on, and that may sound a little confusing to some of you, but we're gonna explain. So the camera in time-lapse mode is going to take a picture um, at a set time interval every six hours. Because we can leave the PIR on, we are also taking photos if there is a subject walking into our detection area. So the added benefit to time-lapse is you're able to monitor the actual progress of the project and monitor the workforce attendance. Most cameras do not have this capability. So if your camera does not have the capability to use your PIR sensor while in time-lapse mode, you're simply just gonna wanna use photo mode. So this example is going to replicate a remote property, a cabin, a vacation home, a building that you're only going to visit maybe once a month or a few times a year. The steel building behind me is actually used to store farm equipment and sees very, very little um, human traffic. Because of that, in this scenario, it is pertinent to use a cell cam. Um, so what we have here is the Exodus uh, Render 4G LTE camera based on Verizon service. We actually have it mounted right to a gravity wagon. So there are several pieces of farm equipment around. Um, so mounting it to this is, is a discrete location. There's nothing out of the ordinary here. And again, we're monitoring the two and only two access points um, to this building, man door, overhead door. We have this camera set up in photo mode with a three shot burst and the upload frequency is real time. So every time, uh, anytime a subject walks in front of this camera, we are going to get uh, multiple pictures of him on almost real time live feed uh, straight to our phone. So um, if anything does happen, you have live information to either get to the site if it's drivable or call authorities or maybe a neighbor or, uh, or something like that. Um, if you don't have access to a cell cam, you can certainly use a standard SD card camera. Uh, the downside of that would be obviously you're not gonna be able to catch someone red handed because the data that you, uh, the data that you receive when you pull the card is just gonna be a little bit dated, but you can certainly get away with it. So in this scenario, we wanna talk about using cameras to monitor vehicle traffic. In this specific set, we're actually monitoring a driveway to a place of business um, but these tips are going to be applicable uh, anywhere where you're monitoring vehicle traffic. So access roads, logging roads, gates, anything of that nature, these tips are going to help you out. Um, the biggest mistake we see people make in these types of scenarios are they're setting the cameras up to take actual photos of license plates. Um, at nighttime, that is very difficult to do because of the reflective nature uh, of license plates. So in this instance, um, we are not worried about daytime images. Obviously, when there's people in a shop and people in the office, security is not an issue. But when it comes to night, it is. So the main priority for us in these types of scenarios is to gather information on the make and model of the vehicle, not the license plate. 
The second most important thing is to maximize the distance uh, of that vehicle travels inside of your detection zone. So if you're in a set like this where we're in close proximity uh, to what we're monitoring, we're, you want to have that camera angled a little bit to where that vehicle is either quartering into your detection area or quartering out of your detection area. If you have the ability to get that camera a little bit further away from uh, your access points, you can run them perpendicular. That is uh, actually maybe a little bit better. It's going to allow you to maximize that um, distance of your detection area, the horizontal distance in your detection area. So those are uh, the, really the biggest things when it comes to using trail cameras um, to monitor access roads for vehicle traffic. Guys, we hope this stuff helps you out. If you find any value in it all, please hit the subscribe button. We'd be super humbled.